Well, hello, everybody, and welcome back to week two here in the SNU 107 Learning Community. I am Melanie Shop, your SNU 107 Learning Community gal, and I am just so excited that we are already here in week two, um, but also that this week you're really going to dive in and learn a lot about yourself and your time management and where your time goes and how to control your attitude, emotions, and schedule through all the things. So let's dive in. First and foremost, folks, your experience here at Southern New Hampshire University is important to us. It's our policy and practice to create an inclusive and accessible learning environment. If there are aspects of instruction or course design that present barriers to accessibility, please notify the Online Accessibility Center, the OAC, as soon as possible at 866-305-9430. You can also email them at oac at snhu.edu or visit the Online Accessibility Center website. As a reminder, what does this mean? This means that the university wants you to get content in a way that works best for you and your learning style. If you have questions about this um, or would like to know more about the opportunities that the Online Accessibility Center may offer you, please reach out to them or you can also have your advisor connect you with them too. So folks, couple of reminders. We're now in week two, so as you guys know, um, we do have some live webinar sessions, but that was the preterm, and then we will be live again in week six of this term. Um, the other webinars are all on demand, so you don't need to worry about a microphone or a camera. You just have to be able to listen when you go to the First Year Experience, the FYE YouTube channel. Um, as you guys work through the webinars, remember I post them, these on-demand pre-recorded ones. They're ready for you on Monday morning of the new week that starts. So. That's the nice thing is you can watch these as many times as you need to when it's convenient for you. As a reminder, the First Year Experience FYE YouTube channel and our SNU 107 Learning Community are both academic spaces, so always be mindful of your conduct. And a reminder that these webinars are not mandatory, they're not graded, there's no, any, there's no extra credit points, but I sure hope you have fun and learn things along the way. So for week two, module two, I know for a lot of you guys and gals, you're probably just starting to get maybe into a routine or starting to figure out that you need a routine. It's okay. It can take a few weeks to kind of get settled and get organized. So make sure you take it, take a big old deep breath and just remind yourself that you completely got this. You can do that. And if you have questions or you're getting stuck, always remember to make sure that you're reading those course announcements and checking your SNHU university email. Okay. Those two spots are so important for your success because your faculty spend time putting together helpful tips and tricks for your success for each week on the assignments in the course announcements. And sometimes they'll email out extra information or just a recap of the information to your SNHU email. So be checking both spots all the time. The other thing is, is if you have questions or you're not sure about something or you're stuck, Folks, do not be afraid to email, call, text your faculty as soon as possible with any questions or concerns. Don't hesitate. We want you to be successful, okay? So speaking of your faculty, this week is week two. So your week one, first week assignments, um, will come back by Sunday of week two. So remember this first week, or your first week, you had that initial discussion post come in on Thursday, and then any peer responses and that warm up came in by Sunday, right? Your faculty have this whole next week, so until that Sunday of week two, to be grading your items. Remember, some faculty grade as things come in, some grade throughout the week, others you might not see anything until bright and early Monday morning, but just know that by Sunday at 11.59 p.m., that's our due date to get your guys' grades back to you, okay? So make sure you know how to check those grades and how to find your faculty feedback. And if you get stuck, make sure to reach out to us and let us know, okay? Now, for this week, you have a couple of things for your assignments. First, you have a very new assignment called the activity assignment. So it's really important that you have Microsoft Word or PDF or something compatible. So when you upload these, so your faculty can grade them, they're able to open them and grade them. This is your reminder, you get Office 365 for free as an SNHU student, okay? The other thing I want to remind you is to make sure you know how to find those, and we'll talk about that today, how to open the activity, how to type in it, and a reminder that that is due on Sunday. The other assignment you have this week is, again, a discussion board assignment. You did one of these last week, so nothing new, but the content and questions you need to answer 
is different. So make sure you check out everything in module two, review the required reading, click through the module two, um, module itself, page after page, remember click and scroll, click the blue, and that initial post is due by Thursday again, and then any classmate responses by Sunday. Can you do those earlier? Of course you can, but those are the hard deadlines to make sure that they get graded on time, okay? So one of the big things I wanted to make sure, and I'll show you guys this in your classroom area too, but it's really important for you guys to know how to check your grades once they start coming in. Things like that warm-up quiz or the warm-up activity, those are automatically graded. So you should already see a grade for those. But items like your discussion board and your activity assignments, those are graded by your faculty member. How you find that is going into your classroom and click on that course menu. And then when you pull up the little menu, you know, has announcements and learning modules, discussions, assignments, grades. You want to click on grades and when you click on that it's going to open up this page that'll list all of your assignments you'll see a point area you'll see a grade and you'll see this assessment column that has you a little button where you can click to view the rubric or view the assessment you want to click on that and when you open that up you'll be able to see any feedback written feedback that your faculty member gave you on that assignment things you did well things you could work on for next time and if you have questions on that make sure to reach out to your faculty okay the other reminder is check this every week. You know, don't miss this because if you're struggling in an area, this is a way for you to get it caught now and be able to improve it on the next time you do an assignment. All right, so that's how to check your grades. Week two is all about time management. And so I love this comic. I guess a lot of you might call it a meme now, but the original word was comic. How do they expect us to learn time management when every hour here feels like three hours, a week feels like a year, and the weekends fly by in like 10 minutes? Just a little bit of a Monday funny for you. It's true though, when we're doing something that we enjoy or we are looking forward to, it feels like the time just goes really fast, right? But when we're doing something that we don't enjoy, it can really feel like the time is dragging by. And for some of us, we just wish there was more than 24 hours in a day but guess what? There isn't. So we have to figure out a way to make time work best for us and our unique personalities and learning styles in lives, right? So I love this quote by Lillian Penn. Time is what we want most, but what we use worst. And I will tell you that one of the biggest culprits of ineffective time management tends to be social media related, whether it's phones um, and watching TikTok videos or YouTube videos that are not academically related, or texting or Facebooking or um, Instagramming, those things that we do that seem passive and might just take a couple of minutes, steal hours from our weeks. So as you guys embark on this academic journey, one of the pieces of advice I want to give you, because every term, students talk about how they didn't realize how much time they were spending on things like social media apps or their phone or even Netflix, you know, Hulu, binging, you know, whatever it might be, or gaming. Those were big culprits, but phones, learn how to shut them off, you know, put them on silent, put them somewhere else turn off notifications, do something so you can manage your time and not have those distractions at your fingertips. Also, this is your academic journey. It is you that has to manage your time in a way that you can do all the things that are on your plate, both inside and outside of school. So I want you to say out loud or type it, whatever you need to do for you or write it down, I need to do what works best for me. And I know for some of you, you're thinking, I have other people in this household that depend on me or I take care of. I can't just always do what works for me. When it comes to school, you have to start with what works with you and for you best first. And then you can morph, morph the family schedule or the schedule that you have of taking care of others and all the things you have going on around that. But you've got to set some time and some boundaries for you and your success. So let's talk about it. I want you to think about how you learn best. So if, let me know if this sounds like you. Are you somebody that likes routine or structure or you need to know all the details or due dates and deadlines? Like you need to know all the things and you have a routine and a structure of how you do things. No matter what it is, work, home life, academic life, you have a routine and structure. You need those things. When it comes to school, 
put a routine in place that's school-wise. You know, I, examples, I have some students that on Sunday, they check and see what's coming up for the week and make a schedule for the next couple of days of when they're going to study. Not the whole week, just a couple of their days. They might maybe get up in the morning before everybody else is awake. Maybe they study over their lunch hours or breaks at work, or they find nooks and crannies in their days if they're taking care of other people when maybe kids are napping or kids are playing. They kind of try to work on a few things here or there. Um, maybe it's at night when everybody's gone to bed. Whatever works best for you. But if you have something in your life, and this isn't just school, this could be work, this could be home life, this could be academic life, that you need a routine or structure or you're missing details or information, you need to put those things in place. It'll help you feel more organized and at peace with your time. On the flip side, do any of these sound like you? You need to focus on a few things. Like if somebody gives you a list of 10 things you have to do, or if you make a to-do list of 10 things, it stresses you out. Let's try like three to five or two to three. Let's start small. Like we can't do everything at one time. We need to like zone in, right? It helps to write things down um, using visuals. Maybe you're somebody that likes to cross things off. Um, these are good things. And actually you could have kind of a myriad, a variety of all of these things that sound like you, but you want to put things in place that are going to work for your success. So if you're somebody that needs to get a schedule or routine down and you're somebody that needs to write things down, get a planner in the dollar aisle at Target or the dollar spot or from the dollar store, or wherever, it doesn't have to be some expensive planner if that works for you and make a schedule. I'm a post-it note person. I write a schedule down of what I have to do the next day, every night before I go to bed. Um, I have friends that use their apps on their phone or schedules on their phone. My husband has an Excel sheet. He uses his calendar at work. Everybody does what works best for them. I have alarms in my phone for things that I need to do, home life, work life, school life, right? So I'm kind of a mix of both things. A cool tip that came from a student years ago, there's somebody that needs to kind of hear things. And so they would record in their voice memo option in their phone or on their phone, they would record what they needed to do. The next day, the night before, and then they would listen to it throughout that day and it helped them remember like the things they needed to get done. So doing things in a way that works for you. For those of you that are managing multiple moving parts and people, things like having a family calendar or a calendar of where everybody's going and who needs to go where and what needs to be done might be helpful, whether it's on a whiteboard or a chalkboard or a lot of cool apps that are on phones. If you're a tech, a tech user, um, there's a lot of things that are out there, but take a deep breath and start small. Do like one thing at a time, make a, make, keep it simple, get out a piece of paper, write down what you need to do tomorrow. Look at your calendar, see when you can plug in some time to work on your assignments. Okay, those are just some ideas of thinking about how you learn best. Um, Some of the things we've already talked about is you guys heard in the preterm webinar and again last week in week one, it's so important to schedule your SNHU time. Okay, you have to fit it in there somewhere. If you don't schedule it, your week is going to get away from you and you're going to be stressed, overwhelmed, scrambling at the end of the week. Some of you guys might work the weekends, so you don't have that option to be to procrastinate and put things off. You have to do things during earlier in the week. The earlier you can get it done, the more time you're going to feel like you have to yourself, okay? You have to learn to prioritize. This is people, places, and things. When you're in school, you can't do all the things. It's going to burn you out. So you need to think about what is really important, who is really important, and how to organize your time that works best for you. For many of you, you have loved ones. All of you probably have loved ones, right? So when you're in school and working and all this stuff, it can feel like it's taking time away from your loved ones. So make it a plan that if you get your schoolwork done by Friday, then Saturday is movie night. And maybe you get to order pizza or do some kind of fun dinner in or dinner out, like make it a reward and make it fun. So you can still feel like you're getting to do things, but you're also able to get things done. Remember to be flexible and positive with yourself. Every week is not going to go smoothly. You might have the best plan ever and it could be blown up into pieces. It's okay. To start over. Um, remember to communicate with your faculty, your employer, the people that live with you, your loved ones, your instructors, your advisors, like communicate if you're struggling, falling behind, have questions. If things happen, like if you get sick 
or you have to travel unexpectedly for work or your Wi-Fi goes down or your computer breaks or your phone breaks, like let us know because we can always make a plan for your success so you don't fall behind. Delegate. This is one of my favorite ones, but it can be one of the hardest ones. If there are other people living in your household, what are things that those other folks can help with? Could they do laundry? Could they help make dinner a couple nights a week? Um, could they unload the dishwasher? That can be a tough one. You might not find all the dishes again. My children are eight and 11 and the dishwasher is theirs. And I have to go hunting for a lot of Tupperware, but it takes something off of my plate, okay? So what are things that somebody can help with? Whether it's mowing the lawn, whether it's watching children so you can get stuff done, like think about that and ask for assistance, okay? Um, prepare before. I always like this one. If you know that maybe you have a busy work season coming up or your kids are gonna be really busy with certain extracurricular activities, or maybe you're getting married or having a baby or you're gonna be out of town for work, like whatever it might be, if there's something you know that's coming up, prepare now. So that way, let's say you're gonna be traveling like week four of the term. You could email your instructor and say, hey, I'm gonna be traveling coming up. Would it be okay if I work on some of these assignments ahead of time and get them to you early? so that I know that they're done. That's an example, okay? The other thing is, this is a big one. I want you to highlight this, bold this, write it down, say it out loud, just say no. No is a complete sentence. We are pulled in so many different directions every day and we always want to do all the things, but we have to be fiercely protective of our time, especially when it comes to things we really don't wanna do because it leaves room for our yeses to things we want to do. So if you become protective of your time, it allows you to focus on what's a priority and be able to get things done and then say yes to things that you wanna do. For some of you, maybe there's things coming up throughout the year that you're like, oh my gosh, I've been looking forward to this, but I don't know if I'm gonna have time. Maybe it's no right now, but not no forever, okay? And there's a lot of things we get asked to do. We don't have to do it all. So pick your nose wisely. Okay, say no. Um, eliminate those distractions and time stealers. I already talked about this, folks. That tends to be the social media, the phones, the Netflix and Hulu watching, uh, the gaming, even my book lovers. You know, we get into a good book and before we know it, we thought it was 10 minutes and an hour and a half has gone by. You know, things happen. Eliminate those the best you can and use those things as a reward. Like it's so much more fun to watch your favorite Netflix series or show or even on regular TV if you know all the stuff that you needed to get for school was already done, then you're not thinking about it in the back of your head, okay? Always remember you have so many people and departments here at SNHU supporting you in your success. Use those resources. And also you have social supports. Social supports are people, places, and things outside of the university. So friends, family, community organizations, lean on those folks both inside and outside the university for your success as you need assistance because your degree and you are worth it okay so that is a little bit about time management i hope that it helped you think of some things that you could do or you could try or made you think about ways to kind of be more in control of your time in a way that works best for you the other thing i wanted to talk about was this week's assignment so as i mentioned earlier you have the week two discussion assignment okay this week, you're talking about identifying schedule interruptions. You know, so think about things that interrupt your schedule. Um, what you have control over, what you don't have control over it, and control over, and how you handle it. So, for example, let's say that you overslept. Ah, that, you know, lends to a chaotic, usually frenzied morning, right? How do you handle it? How do you adjust your attitude? What if you're running late for work? What if you get a flat tire? What if you drop your phone and it breaks? Like things that happen or maybe somebody overschedules or kids get sick. I mean, the list goes on, right? But you wanna think about you. What are common interruptions you might have? Maybe some that you could have control over, some that you can't, and then how you can handle it. Remember, initial discussion post due on Thursday, two classmate responses minimum, you can always do more, due by Sunday. The other thing is that new week two activity. It looks a little bit like this. You can see on my screen. You're gonna open up a Word document. You're gonna type right in it. And you're going to list out your busiest day before. Always read the details of the assignments, folks, okay? You don't wanna miss points. Think about your busiest day before adding schedule to your world, to your everyday. What did it look like? 
and just be general. You know, if you were at work, if you were sleeping, if you were hanging out with family or friends, um, maybe you were on Netflix, maybe you were on your phone, maybe you went to lunch, maybe you're getting groceries, whatever. Keep it simple, but put your schedule together, okay? And then you just wanna answer these two questions that are below it. You know, how would you have included schoolwork for the day in that busiest day? Like just use an example, don't overthink it. Um, and then write your response in complete sentences. The next question is, Describe how you would choose between tasks, activities, and events that take place at the same time on your schedule. We can't be doing, be two places at once, right? So how do we choose what and who is a priority and how do we work that so we can get our things done, right? You will type right in the, type right in there, you'll save it and you'll upload it, okay? So I'm gonna show you guys that really quick too. So give me just a second here because I wanna make sure that I get that done. I'm gonna share my screen here real quick. So this is module two in Brightspace. So remember you click on course menu, learning modules, and then you will click on module two. When you pull up module two, it looks like this. Okay, remember my page is an instructor, so mine looks a little bit different. Scroll down. If you click right here, this is gonna take you the discussion for the week that we already talked about, but it goes over the questions again. And this 2-2 activity personal scheduling is your new activity assignment. So you wanna click on this requirements and rubrics and it's gonna open up what you're doing for this assignment. This, click the blue, gets you to where you wanna go, click on this and it's gonna have you download using Microsoft Word, the template for the assignment. The template means that you have something to fill out, you're not starting from scratch. So again, you wanna make sure you click on the blue and download it. And as you scroll down, it goes over the assignment, but also talks about how you're going to be graded, all right? So when you click on this blue, get to where you wanna go, it is going to download Microsoft Word and it's gonna look like this. For some of you, if not all of you, there'll be this yellow banner that comes up and it says enable editing. Just click on it and here's the template. So what you wanna do, like I said, is create a schedule for what your busiest day looked like before you started school. So for example, you type right in here, okay? So I'm gonna delete that out and I'm gonna put, I was sleeping, right? It was, you know, five to six in the morning and then let's see, I'm getting ready for work, right? Oh, whoop, sorry. So getting ready for work, right? And then maybe, you know, fill out every single one, okay? I'm not gonna go that crazy, but just fill out every single one you know, maybe you were on lunch break here. Oops. So you wanna fill that out. Running errands, right? Maybe you were sleeping, maybe you went to dinner, just fill it out. And then underneath here, here's question two and question three. This is where you would type in complete sentences your answer to the question, okay? So just take this little part out and just type right in there your answer to the question, all right? You would then go to file, go to save as, save it, and you will then upload it. Okay, folks, um, the biggest thing I want you guys to remember is if you get stuck or if you have questions, so please let your faculty member know, okay? So hold on just a sec, it takes a minute for this to come back. There we go, we're back. So. That's a quick walkthrough of how you find that assignment template. Also, there's a focus video that walks you guys right through it too. And down here in the chat, you'll see the link for the focus videos. You can go back and watch this webinar as many times as you need to, but I wanted to leave you guys with a quote. It's one of my favorites by Harvey McKay. Time is free, but it's priceless. You can't own it, but you can use it. You can't keep it, but you can spend it. Once you've lost it, you can never get it back. Folks, we all have 24 hours in a day. Make it work the best for you. Do your best here in week two and remember,